Second Sunday of Lent. The Interred and Communio of the Second Sunday of Lent. The Antiphons of the Transfiguration. The Interred Tibi Dixit. Tibi Dixit Cor Meum. Quisivi Vultum Tuum. Vultum Tuum Domine Requiram. Ne avertas faciem tuam a me. To you, my heart has said, I have sought your face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Do not hide your face from me. The communion visionem quam vidistis. Visionem quam vidistis nemini dixeritis done camortuis resurgat filius hominis. Do not tell anyone of the vision you have had until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The history of the Roman liturgy bears witness to a long and complex evolution of the structure of the Lenten season. From a length of only three weeks, maintained until the 4th century, there was a gradual transition, in particular through the papacies of Leo the Great and Gregory the Great, to a length of six weeks, within which various arrangements were made to the repertoire of chants. In this elaborate process there is one fixed point in the arrangement handed down to us by the liturgical musical manuscripts sources, which began to appear in the 10th century. The second Sunday of Lent, according to the blueprint in use from the liturgical books until the last Vatican Council, was comparable to the fourth Sunday of Advent, in the sense that both festivities concluded a special week belonging to the liturgical cycle of the four tempora, suppressed by the post-conciliar reform. The liturgical musical richness of these four moments of the year, which corresponded to the beginning of the seasons, was a symbol of the richness of the gift of the earth. The first week of Lent was in fact associated with thanksgiving for the approach of spring, which the liturgy of the four tempora celebrated with particular solemnity on Wednesday, Feria Quarta, Friday, Feria Sexta, and above all on the Saturday evening, with a vigil that concluded at dawn with the Mass which took the place of the Sunday liturgical office. The result of this, as in Advent, was a sort of liturgical vacuum for the Sunday that closed the week, which was in fact called the Sunday that vacat, is missing. The most Gregorian codices nonetheless bear witness that well before the 10th century this lacuna had already been filled, and each concluding Sunday of the four tempora was endowed with its own mass. What must be stressed, however, is that the chance that the ancient sources provide for the Sunday mass were not at all proper, in the sense that they were for the most part taken from Feria Quarta of the rich previous week. In essence, the proper of the second Sunday of Lent coincided with the proper of the Wednesday of the first week, with the exception of the tractus after the first reading. And this is what the liturgical books also bear witness to until the most recent reform. But the Graduale Romanum of 1974 the fruit of the post-conciliar reform, brought about a significant change, of course, that deserves our attention. The examples of the two selections offered for listening, 
de intuitivi dixit and the communio visionem, paint a sufficiently clear picture of what has happened. The change of course can in fact be detected through a comparison of the editions of the gradual printed before and after the Council. The two proper chants for Wednesday of the tempora of spring, which for several centuries were also sung on the following Sunday, were the introit reminiscere. Reminiscere. Reminiscere miserationum tuarum domine. And the communio intellige clamorem meum. Intellige clamorem meum intende voci orationis me. But in the gradual of 1974, they were kept only on the original weekday. Reminiscere. Feria quarta, hebdomada prima, graduale triplex graduale romanum, while the Sunday, although with the option of the using the, pre the previous intrait, they are replaced with the intrait tibi dixit, the intrait tibi dixit, tibi dixit cor meum, hebdomada secunda, quadragesima, dominica, from graduale triplex, and the communio Visionem. How can this new selection be explained? And where do these two chants come from, never before associated with the liturgy of this second Sunday of Lent? In order to answer both of these questions, one must consider the title of the second Sunday of Lent, called of the Transfiguration of the Lord. Although the liturgical feast of the Transfiguration falls on August 6, the relative gospel account is proclaimed in the Roman Rite on this Sunday and has been kept there, even after the Reform, in all three years of the liturgical cycle, unlike what has happened for the subsequent Sundays of Lent. The account of the Transfiguration, in particular that of Matthew, gives special emphasis to the face of Christ, which shines like the sun, a fairly common theme in the tradition of ancient liturgical chant. In the Intuitivi Dixit, the theme of the face becomes absolutely central and is closely associated with the querere deum, the seeking of God, the essential principle in the Church's reflection. The placement of this introit in the Sunday of the Transfiguration therefore responds to a sort of principle of pertinence, according to which the text chanted should recall as far as possible the central theme of the celebration. The anonymous composer, in fact, clearly identifies the salient point of the phrasing in the last words of the first phrase, Quesivi vultum tu, I have sought your face. Expanded musical values and an abundance of notes realize this intention, which is in turn wisely prepared for well in advance through the prolonged reverberation of the C Do melodic range, characteristic of the third mode, the Deuterus Authenticus. Modal insistence becomes textual insistence with the repetition and decisive new emphasis of the same concept. Vultum tuum domine requiram. Your face, Lord, will I seek, before the composite final supplication, mea vertas faciam tuam amen, 
do not hide your face from me, realize the concluding cadence, rendered effectively by a melody that bent toward the lower registers. For the Communio Visionem Quamvidistis, the selection made by the 1974 Gredua departs from the preceding tradition. In this case, the principle of pertinence is even more evident than in the interest. The text of this antiphon was in fact taken directly from the conclusion of the evangelical account. But the selection suggested by textual pertinence in this case has been realized at the expense of another principle, which we could define as that of coherence, and this is even more important if it is related to Gregorian chant as a whole. The defect of coherence lies in the dissociation between form and liturgical context that the selection of this antiphon ends up provoking. One cannot escape the fact that the antiphon visionem does not belong to the grand repertoire of the Mass but to the divine office. The lack of antiphons for the communion that make direct reference to the account of their transfiguration swayed the compilers of the 1974 Gradual toward the use of a piece borrowed from another Gregorian repertoire that, as authentic as it may be, was conceived with different stylistic characteristics that are intimately associated with the liturgy of the hours. The extremely syllabic nature of this antiphon offers explicit confirmation of this and reproduces the criterion that inspired the compilation of the Graduale Simplex in 1967. The Communio Visionem is nothing more than a syllabic antiphon of the Divine Office, alone to the repertoire of the Mass. Its original destination clarifies its syllabic nature. The style is simple and is based on an essential modal structure that can easily be classified as first mode. The musical proclamation of the text is limited to the pure practicality of correct pronunciation, to be realized without any particular expressive flair, but with the naturalness required by an ordinary delivery and the verbal rhythm anchored by respect for syllabic values. Thank you. 